And those who keep talking about this wonderful husband of mine, he's a good husband. And he's a good leader. And he's going to lead. We are on our knees. Yes, they said he will not get there. He's there by the grace of God. And with the power of God, he will remain there. And we are going to pray for him. Because you like hearing, that is what, it is a message coming from his wife. Yes. <laughs> and I hope I'm representing him well. And those who keep talking about this wonderful husband of mine, he's a good husband. And he's a good leader. And he's going to lead. We are on our knees. Yes. They said he will not get there. He's there by the grace of God. And with the power of God, he will remain there. Amen. And we are going to pray for him. Because you like hearing, that is what, it is a message coming from his wife. <laughs> so as you enter the retirement after 40 years, I'm sure you are going into another level where you are going to guide the people of God to avoid sin. Continue the way you have been doing. I was just talking to you the other day and I told you, The deputy president, he said, I am the, the truth, the way, and the life. And the truth must be taught to those who want to hear it and those who don't want to hear it. When you are told the truth, it hurts. But one day, that truth comes to redeem you. Because that is why we are here and that is why God called us. To be a leader is to be responsible and accountable. And I'm very sure at this time, because I know many, this is what they are going to be carrying around. I know the work we are doing, the drug barons and those who sell alcohol, they are not happy. And they are fighting. But this family, you cannot fight it. I can tell you, I'm standing on the altar. You will not be able to succeed against us. Because the work we are doing is the work of God. And it will be done. We are going to save the boy child. And we are going to save our country. And that is why we are here. We are going to fight. We are going to fight what must be fought. This beer, this alcohol, vagi, not spirit, we are going to turn them into the spirit of God. You have seen my sons here. They are changing. And so when you see him being fought, he's talking about coffee, he's talking about tea, he's talking about milk, and all those people, cartels and barons, they have a lot of money. And they want to make him look like he's, uh, <laughs> he's not the right person. But who has been there that has been talking about what he's doing? He must do the work of God. And he will do it. I actually support him in the evening. You fight him during the day in the evening. I pray for him. Amen. And I encourage him. And in the morning when he's going, when he's wearing his suit, I'm telling him, just go tell them the truth and do what is right. Amen. And therefore I am saying, our reverend, guide us, pray for us, and take this generation to the next level where we will be at rest. Because Hebrews chapter 3 verse 9 and 11 says, where your ancestors tested, you know those 40 years, where your ancestors tested and tried me, they tried God, through for 40 years, they, though for 40 years they saw what I did, that is why I, uh, I was angry with that generation. And I said, 
their hearts are always going astray and they have not known my ways. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never see rest. I pray that our reverend, as you go to retire, you will come to give us counsel, to pray and to intercede for us and show us the way so that our generation will not be like this generation that went astray and they did not obey God and they never entered to rest. Dramwera mutugate riwito. Lewe agethi eritaya. Newero get aigira. Wago to hoera. Nago to zaitha nila berea gai. Negua generation nieno. Deka nage ko igira ke huroko. Na negua generation nieno. Ete kire ko iguo horo ama. Naweka olia gai edaga. Gai ya moradime. Gai ya muikewega. I hear many of his people are calling here asking whether I'm dead, whether I'll survive, whether I'll recover. They were celebrating. It's the most unfortunate thing that has ever happened in this country. That you can be so vicious to a man who helped you to be president. And the crime of this man, telling you the truth, don't evict people without compensation, Mr. President. Mr. President, don't overtax people. You are killing them, you are killing their businesses. Don't force a housing program on people. If people do not want these houses, don't force them. My only problem with the President is just being truthful because nobody else can tell him. The framers of the 2010 Constitution wanted a Deputy President who is elected. As a bava who can stand for the people. The charity we are being treated for, too, is get rid of an elected deputy president and appoint a control freak. A fellow you appoint who cannot ask a question, who cannot say anything. And I'm sure if they succeed, he'll be asked to sign an undated resignation letter so that in case he starts asking questions, he can just be told to resign. But the framers of the 2010 constitution were very clear in their mind why they wanted a deputy president who is elected. I'm the only man in the cabinet and in the whole government who can stand up to William Ruto and tell him, hey brother, this is not right. This a done thing is not good for the country. There's too much corruption, Mr. President. This how things thing is being forced down on the people of Kenya. And they don't like it. Please don't force it down on them. You know, situations where medical equipment that was being supplied by Kenyans to the Ministry of Health and now has been given to one single Asia. I said, Mr. President, this is not right. We are killing our business people. So, as we speak, I say that uh, my lawyers are in court. We have faith in our judiciary. And I requested that according to the rules of natural justice, I be accorded an opportunity to be heard in the Senate. You remember I presented myself to the National Assembly and defended myself. In the Senate, I was there day one, and even when the Speaker asked me to sit down to listen to the charges, I decided to stand up to face my accusers. I was there the following day. I was ready for cross-examination. The 11 counts is nothing but malice and fiction. It was a political game by the President to get rid of me.